Good morning, Rhoda. Today we're headed straight for the ditch. In 1972, Neil Young recorded and released Harvest. It was his biggest record probably ever in terms of sales. It's got a lot of really great songs and big, big singles like Old Man and Heart of Gold. Speaking of Heart of Gold years later, Neil Young said, This song put me in the middle of the road. Traveling there soon became a bore, so I headed for the ditch. A rougher ride, but I saw more interesting people there. It is this quote that gives its name to the Ditch Trilogy. The first record in the Ditch Trilogy is Time Fades Away. It's a live album that was recorded on the tour that followed Harvest, and it's got all original, like, new material, which isn't ordinary for a live album, but it's really, really good, and the songwriting is fantastic, and there's, it's, it's reckless, and it's, it's kind of damaged, and it's beautiful, and that's kind of what unifies the Ditch trilogy thematically, is this damage, and beauty, and, and sorrow, um, and sloppiness. Neil Young's songwriting, which was never bad, uh, is really, really good on this record. You get amazing lines like, Church is long, preach sex is wrong, Jesus where has nature gone? It may be the most sought after of the Ditch Trilogy albums just because it's never been released on CD, but it is a sought after item and it is highly regarded probably partially because of its somewhat rarity. Following Time Fades Away, Neil Young went into the studio and recorded one of my favorite albums of all time, but it was not released. Instead, On the Beach was released. On the Beach is also one of my favorite records. Um, everyone in the Ditch Trilogy is. What's great about On the Beach is that it is a little bit more put together in terms of arrangements and performances. It's not as sloppy as the other two records. It's not as pressured to say something. It's not as immediate and intense. Uh, it's a little bit more literary at times than a lot of the other songs on the other records because those were kind of like punk rock writing. Like, it was, it was very present. It was very much what was happening and just get the song down and do it. Um, on the Beach is a contrast to those two records because it has a lot more thought put into it lyrically and in the arrangements. And you get really strange, interesting stuff like... The, the piano work on the record is very interesting. Um, the arrangement of for the turnstiles is just amazing, and I don't know where that came from. And I thought that it was a banjo, but it's a snare drum, and you have to hear it, I guess. But my favorite thing about On the Beach, next to everything that happens on side two, is its contrast against the other two records, and it shows... Neil Young trying to appease the record company a little bit and uh, actually getting it released. Whereas the previously recorded album, which was released the year after, is just not that way at all. It's called Tonight's the Night and it is hands down my favorite Neil Young record because it is so damaged and it is so hurtful. <laughs> it, like It is catharsis in vinyl. Like, a few years ago, when I just became, like, a legal person who was able to drink, I used to get drunk and listen to this and, like, bawl because it's catharsis in a can. Like, you can't listen to this album and not feel moved because it is so damaged. The facts and details of what Neil Young was going through at the time uh, don't really matter as much as he thought they would. I mean, he was struggling against the whole system of popular music. He was struggling against the record company's expectations and the expectations of his newfound fans. He was also coping with the loss of a lot of his friends from drug-related problems. There was a note in Tonight's the Night in the early pressings where Neil Young apologized, said, I'm sorry, this means nothing to you, you don't know these people. But you don't have to know these people. You just have to be a people. I mean, it, it hits you in the gut. It is just one of the most powerful cathartic records that I've ever heard. And I keep saying cathartic, but that's because that's what it is. I don't know another word for it. Now, I really, really value the idea of creativity being consistency and that you don't want to be like wild and like manic and then like depressive and just 
swing from extremes and you don't have to be damaged to write good music or, or novels or anything. You don't have to be drunk and abusing drugs. You don't have to have a personality disorder. You don't have to be crazy to have amazing works come from you. But if there's anything that tries really hard in my life to convince me that that's not the case and that art comes from pain, it is these three records, and tonight's the night specifically. When I listen to any of these records, I lose faith in my ability to do anything without being horribly, horribly injured beforehand. And that's not healthy, so I don't necessarily listen to them all that much. But really, they're unparalleled. These records are so sloppy and beautiful, like so amazingly reckless in every conceivable way that I love them so much. I just kind of have to remind myself that they don't fit into my worldview and that's okay because they are still amazing works of art. So yeah, um, definitely listen to the Ditch Trilogy. Uh, listen to Harvest as well. I know it's cool to not like Harvest, but I like Harvest. I love Neil Young. These are all wonderful records and uh, if you don't know Neil Young, maybe Harvest is the is a good place to start. I don't know if I would start you with the Ditch Trilogy, but maybe. Maybe the best place to start in the Ditch Trilogy is not chronologically, but starting with On the Beach, which I think is the most well put together record. You should uh, listen to those, and I will see you later.